Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you, this episode is brought to you by our patrons like Agar Comics, Qua, and Nestor Flores. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it would really help us out. Thanks for your support, everyone. Hello everyone, welcome back to Enter the Dojo, our new semi-ongoing series where we talk about schools in the L5 RPG by Fantasy Flight Games. Yes, this is semi-regular. It's been a while since we did the last one. But, you know, there's the holidays and lots of other stuff coming up. But we're here, we're back. And uh, don't worry, we're going to continue to do other L5R videos as they happen. Uh, trust me, as soon as Fantasy Flight wants to release that PDF of Emerald Empire, I will be sure to do a review of it. Anyway, we're here. We're doing it. Uh, in case you can't tell by the thumb and title and all that stuff. We're going to be talking about the Miramoto School today. I figured this one would be a good counterpoint because the first episode was the Kakita School. And that's like an actual in-universe argument you can have. You can have a discussion about who was a better duelist, Kakita or Miramoto. So that, I think, is a good in contrast. And you'll see kind of how this works because Kakita are very laser-focused on their one strat. Whatever form that is, they want to do crits, whether that's through finishing blow with the ajutsu cut, whether that's like something like heart piercing strike. Uh, I talked about how you can do some strats with uh, veiled menace and stuff. So, <coughs> excuse me, I had to clear my throat. I might do that a couple times because this is kind of like a video essay thing, and I'm going to be talking for a long period of time with minimal breaks. But they're they're laser focused, like I said, on that on dropping some kind of critical hit. They want one singular strike, and they want it to be really good. Or possibly really weak, because that is a kind of like social counterpoint to the way that you can use their ability. Uh, Miramoto is has a really good school ability, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And they're much more generalist. Uh, they do a lot of things, which makes sense, because they're that is kind of their role within the Dragon Clan, to be the, the rank-and-file guys, while the Togashi, the actual quote-unquote family associated with their founding kami, is doing mysterious stuff, right? So they're much more broad, and I will say this, they can fit into a lot of different dual archetypes, not just the EI Jutsu. And we will kind of discuss how that all works uh, as we go forward. But yes, so we'll be examining the school. This will basically be the same format, because, hey, I literally copied the slides and then I edited the text. Uh, this will be the, basically the same format as the first one. We'll talk about the school what you actually get at your first level, kind of like the different tags and stuff, how you set up, how you use their ability, you know, your starting options and stuff. We'll move into your advancement. We'll both cover the actual curriculum and then some suggestions I have for what advancement options you might want to pick. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Dragon Clan and about the different families that you can pick that might mesh, you know, what they do for playing a Miramoto. We may mention some other stuff in other clans, but we're not going to focus on that because... Even though you can play somebody of a of any clan in any school, is how I should phrase that. That requires you know a lot of like fiddling with the narrative, and that's as I said in the first episode, that's very much on you. It's between you and your GM to figure out what that connection is, and so that's a really individual thing. I don't think I can, you know, I can't pick that for you. Uh, to kind of roll back to some of my thoughts about uh, like uh, Ninja versus Giri, for instance which is another video we did. You should check that out. We've done several. Not only did we do the Kakita thing, but we also did a character creation example where I walked step by step, and I did a long discussion on Ninja vs. Giri. Check it out. We're cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and stop my rambling in the introductory section and jump into the Miramoto school. So, the actual Miramoto Two Heavens, or Niten Adept School, just with the Bushi tag. Yes, I used the derpy old Miramoto Mon design because I don't think there's a modern one. Hopefully, FFG can get some modern artists with, you know, like some some more modern digital techniques to kind of like touch up and reimagine some of these ideas. Uh, a lot of these old ones are derpy. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about what you get for your starting set. So we'll start at the top for rings. You get earth and fire. Two incredibly solid ring choices. You know, there's... Uh, I would say there's absolutely nothing wrong with those options if you're building a core fighting character, both of those proc with endurance, one of them procs with composure, and uh, it also procs with focus, which is your initiative stat for 
intended fights. So it's it's a very good all well rounded fighting build, basically. Though you're uh based on that your vigilance may be a little low. But a solid choices for I think for this this setup that, you know, flows into stuff. So you get to pick five. Now this is very interesting. I think you'll see you'll see some comparisons to uh, Kakita in here, and even to just other, you're going to see, a, as we start talking about Bushi schools, you're going to see a lot of similarities in some of the things they can pick, uh, just because of the way they work. But you can also see their own distinct flavor here. So you get to pick five out of command, composition, fitness, martial arts, melee, meditation, tactics, and theology. So you get to pick five out of seven. So you're going to ditch two. Uh, and which two you ditch is probably going to depend highly on what your choices were at earlier segments. We'll kind of like backtrack and go through that later. But because obviously some of your clan and uh, family choices will pick you up one or two in here. So maybe you want to min-max, maybe you want to broaden out. Obviously, if you are going to be doing a lot of fighting in some form or another, both duels and skirmishes, the easy three pick is fitness, martial arts, melee, meditation. Just, that's a pretty easy three pick for you. Uh, and then what else you pick is probably going to depend a lot on your character. Um, if you want to go more of a warrior poet route, which is a very legitimate thing. We're going to come back to that when we talk about advancement. But that's a very legitimate aspect to your character that you could totally run that build. Uh, composition and theology is perfect for you. If you're going to play a more conventional bushy type who, you know, fights for the clan, both one-on-one -on -one or in large groups, and even in mass combat, Command and Tactics. Uh, this was... Uh, yeah, I'm going to make the comparison to Kikita a lot, just because that's the one entry of these I've done so far, but also because there's a direct comp comparison between these two schools. But they had a lot of action with, uh, like, courtesy as a secondary skill. You know, that's, that's like... Their social skill was almost always, when it came up, was courtesy. And there were some other aspects, you know, some several artisan skills because they did have the artisan tag. That's something I wanted to remark on earlier, but now that we're looking at the tags, also makes sense. Um, I said this before that Kakita was very narrowly focused, despite the fact that it has two tags. So the artisan tag can can kind of mean that you're like a pocket courtier. The Miramoto is pure bushi, but has a possibly better rounded skill set, depending. You know what I mean? But you will see this a lot, like I said, that uh, courtesy is a number one, like, social skill for the Kakita. They also tend to get various artisan skills, like in aesthetics, like a smithing they can pick, you know, design at the start kind of stuff. So you will see composition and theology kind of repeated a lot, and the social skill for Miramoto is definitely commonly command. Which, again, you know, makes sense for what they're doing. So, uh, the rest of this stuff is pretty, you know, obvious you uh, or, or self-explanatory. You get 50 honor. You can access kata rituals and shuji. Now, starting techniques is pretty interesting. Let's start what is technically the bottom, but that's just the way I formatted this. It's formatted over here. You get to pick a kata. You can pick one of... Striking as earth, striking as fire, or striking as water. Which I think really encapsulates the Miramoto ethos here. You can be very flexible. You can pick whichever one of these you like. And uh, quite frankly, you really do need to pick whichever one you like. Whether it's whatever your best ring turned out to be kind of at start. Whether it's which tactic you like the best. So, you know, striking as earth is when you do martial arts with earth you can spend opportunity to treat your physical resistance as higher that can be very useful in a lot of conflicts striking as water lets you treat the target's physical resistance as lower can also be very impressive and striking as fire lets you treat your next critical inflicted uh, by a higher severity per opportunity spent which depending on you know uh, duels can be pretty good if you can actually get away with multiple strikes you know you can actually set up a striking as fire in skirmishes, it can be very useful. Though, obviously, that means, you know, you're you're kind of playing with your different stances because you have to be in the set stance to use the set ability. This is really just whichever one suits you best, whatever you think your character is going to be doing. 
Uh, striking his water is really good if you think you're going to have to worry about people with uh, armor a lot. But if you're in a lot of like formal duels, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, striking his earth can be good if you want to do that tanking strat. Fire is very dangerous, very useful, uh, but obviously will require setting up and requires you to be in fire stands, which is very explosive. So, that said, because you have three options, that's, as I said, very much a whatever you think works for your character. So, here's something that's actually, I think, confused some people and that I certainly think is a little interesting. Uh, but you get early access to Dazzling Performance, which is... Unless, yeah, there's an error in this book that I'm, this PDF that I'm reading. By the way, FFG print PDFs faster. Or whatever you want to say about PDFs. Anyway, uh, you get a rank three Fire Shuji, which is very interesting. And it's when you make an artisan skill, a games, or a performance check. Uh, so mostly artisan probably as a Miraboto because you're not really going to be rolling a lot of games or performance. Uh, but when you're using Fire you can spend opportunity in a way, and basically the next time you receive glory in the scene, increase the amount of glory you receive by one. If there's a character of higher status in the scene, increase it by one per opportunity spent this way instead. So basically, uh, in any situation, you can drop one and you can be like, I can get plus one glory when I receive glory. And then if it's higher status, you can keep spending opportunity. It's a very interesting pick, but I think the focus on glory and the fact that uh, Niten, you know, the two sword school is supposed to be very visually impressive. Like, there's a lot of, there is a lot of talent in using two weapons at once and fighting multiple opponents and lots of other things they are known to do. It kind of makes sense, especially considering it's a it's a fire shuji. Fire is one of the rings they tap into, and I don't know how much you're going to be using it, but because you can get it from start, you can definitely proc it in a little bit if you're working. Uh, with, you know, artisan skills, or if you happen to obtain games or performance, but I think it kind of works for your setup because you are very much the, the, in a sense, the Miramoto are the face of the dragon. There's a cool uh, martial arts movie there for you, Face of the Dragon. But, because uh, Kitsuki, while they are a courtier school, they also have the Bushi tag. And they're very much investiga in investiga blah. Investiga investigatory. I don't know why that word tripped me up so much there. So th they've got kind of like that inquisitive, curious, problem-solving nature, which is not necessarily like sociable, but if you're wandering around in the Dragon Mountains, you don't run into Kitsuki guys. Uh, you probably see a Kitsuki investigator Maybe at the end, after he's followed you and been like, by the way, here's why you're here. Um, here's whatever you need. Fuck off. Right? Uh, but if you're causing trouble, you're going to run into a Miramoto Bushi. So kind of like the, the fact that they can like put attention on them. They can turn their more creative or explosive talents to like a, a positive. They can get glory out of it. Kind of makes sense. I do think it's kind of a weird pick. But it works out for them just because, hey, you get a freaking rank three technique. Oh, that reminds me of the uh, conversation about Kitsuki, which I tend to pronounce all as one syllable. Um, yeah, my I don't pronounce English perfect all the time. I'm not going to pronounce Japanese or fake Japanese names perfect all the time. I'm sorry. I try. I try to be respectful of the pronunciation. I'm going to be talking for like an hour. How long is this recording already? It's like 15 minutes in. Uh, <laughs> and I haven't even gotten to the longest part of this slide. Ooh. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to make a goofs, and I'm going to talk as comes naturally to me. So, we've covered your starting techniques, the the ability to pick which one of the strikings you like best, and they leave out air, which is why they regard it as the weakest striking as, you know, you get to, to move on and do fun stuff. All right, let's talk about the big deal. The reason why people, uh, some people say Miramoto School is even broken, but the reason why they are really good in lots of situations, School Ability Way of the Dragon. And you'll notice I had to make this this type font very tiny because it it was so wordy it would not fit in the graphic otherwise. Uh, so once per round during a duel or skirmish. So uh, that's two out of four conflict types. When you are targeted by an attack check with melee weapon with a melee weapon, you may use one of your weapons readied in a one-handed grip 
or one of your hands if it is empty. That is a pretty big deal, I think, right here, to ward or trap. If you ward, the attacker must re-roll dice containing success or explosive success, thank you, Unicode, up to your school rank. And if you want to be like, but isn't there a font? Yes, it's not in Google Docs. And I can't import fonts. If you trap, reduce the TN of your next attack check against the attacker in, in this scene by your school rank to a minimum of one. You cannot choose this weapon for attack actions until the end of your next turn. So, well, let me break this down for you. If you are in a duel or a skirmish, this is step one in the flowchart, and somebody else comes at you with an attack check with a melee weapon, not unarmed and not with a ranged weapon, but with a melee weapon, so there is some balancing here. Like, if you're fighting, like, barehanded monks or whatever, uh, or just, you know, peasants in a brawl, you can't go all way of the dragon on them, and it's useless against arrows. But if you have a weapon readied in a one-handed grip in or an empty hand, so again, technically there's a little bit of balance. Like, if you're carrying a non-weapon item in your hand, uh, or you have an injury that prevents you from using your hand, you're going to be in a bad way. Uh, you can ward or trap, and you have to pick which one. If you ward, you make the opponent basically have a pseudo-disadvantage to attack you. He has to reroll success or explosive success dice up to your school rank, which, while obviously not perfect, because... Let me... Hold on, I got my dice handy. Let me pull out a dice as an example here. So, I roll a skill die with a success face. There's two... Yeah, there's two pure success faces. There's... Uh, one plain explosive success, and then there's a there's two success with strife, and then one success with strife, and there's what three blank faces? No, there's only two blank faces. Yeah, there's only two blank faces. Okay, and then there's opportunity and success with opportunity is also in there. So that's not necessarily a guaranteed because let's see, I rolled a success, I'm gonna reroll this die, and I got an opportunity. You know, depending on the situation, that may or may not be a loss for me, but you get more dice as your rank increases, and for ring dice, which obviously have less options, uh, that can be a very potent reroll. So it's a pretty good ability. And then trap, though, is arguably even better because you reduce the TN of your next attack check against the attacker this scene by your school rank to a minimum of one. And it's just whenever you make your next attack check. Um, the fact that th this that this can be done with an empty hand is one of the reasons why Miramoto are scary duelists. Um, on the, so on the one hand, I have heard from people who have done like uh, Hema and, or, or other kinds of like fencing uh, or even know a little about, uh, you know, uh, Asian styles, Japanese sword styles and stuff. Technically, you can do barehanded stuff as like a substitute for an offhand weapon, like a parrying dagger, but it's not necessarily the same thing as using a parrying dagger or an offhand weapon. Um, personally, I do think it fits a what I would say is a design philosophy of 5e, which is to be less laser-focused on a singular weapon, right? Um, like, technically, even the, the Iaijutsu techniques aren't, don't require a katana. They require a razor-edged weapon. You know, so this, the fact that this is like, oh, you got an empty hand, you can use it. Or you can use any any old weapon that's in your offhand. It doesn't even have to be a wakazashi. It can be anything. You could use your katana hand and use your wakazashi to attack if you wanted to be weird. It's good that it allows characters to be more diverse. Balance-wise, it's a little scary. So the situation here is some guy in an Iaijutsu duel tries to drop his finishing blow, or he tries to draw and cut, or he tries to do any of the other things you can do to win a single-stroke battle. You're like, you've got a bare hand. Your hand's free. Trap. Nabra. Um, you reduce their uh, TN by school rank. Uh, one of the reasons why I said that at starting levels, using water to draw and cut is kind of a complex situation is because of the TN hey, here's at least one TN reduction, and water is probably not a bad ring for you. We'll, you know, talk about that later when we get into uh, clan and families. Because it's not inherently in your school, but obviously, as you'll note from the fact that you can take striking as water, they're not expecting you to have a bad water ring eventually. So you can definitely turn this into a thing. 
Uh, you can turn it into a thing in a skirmish. You can turn it into a thing in many duel types. This is one of the reasons why I say that Miramoto is really broad. They're good at lots of things. They can totally sidle up and try to win the whole single-stroke battle just like a Kakita can, and maybe not as flashily as they can, and certainly not with as much of a safety net if you accidentally kill somebody. But if, I've said this before, if your Kakita gets into like a warrior's duel where, you know, guys can just clonk on you, or even if you get into a sparring match with just like wooden swords, uh, you're a little boned. Kakita aren't as bad in, in skirmishes because they've got some techniques that, that kind of add up there. But yeah, like, if you get into a duel that is not a strict by the book Iaijutsu duel, you're in a bad way. Miramoto does not have that problem. And they don't have that problem in skirmishes. So. It's just a really good defensive or offensive ability. I think the the one good kicker is you can't you have to have multiple weapons one way or another, and you lose a weapon to do it, which is good and may limit some other stuff you can do. But yeah, it's a really freaking good ability, and it only gets better with time. So th this is why I think all around the Miramoto are such a broad, well-rounded school as their ability is so applicable. Uh, if you are a GM and you wanted to be, no, you can't use an empty hand. I would accept that. Uh, I personally am not going to run it that way until I get some like experience under there and be like, no, nah, this is definitely too much because, like I said, I like the idea that they're like, eh, you, don't, you don't have to be using two weapons all the time, right? But if, if in your experience you're like, no, nah, I don't like that, you can totally make that call, I think. And to round it out, speaking of weapons you have, let's talk about their outfit. Uh, Miramoto has a very broad outfit starting. They get traveling clothes, ceremonial clothes, and Ashigaru armor. So they get one of everything. Uh, and you can either pick a Daisho pair, so you can get Katana and Wakizashi, or you can take a Wakizashi and any two weapons of rarity six or lower. So if you wanted to like throw in like butterfly swords or something weird, you could pick those two. And your traveling pack. So, uh... You're a bushi. You get armor, you get ceremonial clothes, which is good, because you might be dueling, and you get traveling clothes, and then you can get two swords. Or possibly two swords and another sword. Or all kinds of stuff. I expect most players will pick the Daisho because katanas are cool, but hey, we just talked about it. Broad options. I think that's about all there is to say about the core school, since we talked about how good the ability is and how well-rounded it is. And y'all are probably tired of staring at the Derp Dragon's face. So let's talk advancement so talking about that advancement uh once again ignore the left hand side of your screen we're gonna talk about that in a second let's first look at the actual curricula column on the right there and you can kind of you can definitely get a feel for this school first of all you will notice while you have a decent chunk of shuji every now and then uh you are mostly kata whether that's uh blank rank selections which are open-ended, or specific katas, some of which are uh, privileged access. Also, uh, similar to the Kakita, uh, and actually sometimes even better, the way they, they alternate, um, you are, at every skill rank, you have an opportunity to take more melee and meditation one way or the other. You either get them in your curriculum separately, or you get a martial skills skill group block. You will also, as noted, as I noted earlier, see a lot of composition. Uh, if you wanted to do that warrior poet thing I talked about, you can totally do that because that is completely in block for you. Command shows up a lot. Uh, theology shows up a couple times. You know, another thing you might notice uh, that's a bit odd because you have a like one block of scholar skills. You also have it show up a couple times on its own. Is medicine. I think the important thing to note here is that in addition to battlefield medicine, which, while a little practical, could also still work as a thing, um, medicine is also the skill for like chemistry and lots of natural philosophy, which very much benefits or befits, I should say, any member of the dragon clan. So again, that kind of like, y you know, full philosophy, warrior, poet look, especially considering that you are are supposed to be, you know, a, a strict, strong, strict adherence to the, uh, to the, the Tao of Shinsei going on there. But it's a very interesting blend. Uh, you will also actually get a couple of, of chances for trade skills early on. They kind of fade out as you get later, but labor is a rank one skill you can take, and then you get trade skills in the next block if you wanted it. 
you know, hey, you never know what you might have to do up in the mountains. Uh, and actually, the whole the fact that you live in, and fight in a mountain terrain does make me feel a bit weird that you don't get a lot of opportunities for fitness. But you're uh, you're really focusing on being good at stabbing people or being good at meditating, which of course turns into dueling initiative. So that's a good thing to focus on because it makes sense for your character and also helps. That's basically the skill breakdown. You'll notice there's a there's a survival also lurking in there as a as as a trade skill. It's kind of interesting. Um, tactics is a thing that does not really crop up for you, other than, of course, you can take it in those couple of points where you have martial skills. Well, it's, it's really three, because there's exactly three, but you know what I mean. So, you have command, which kind of works, but your opportunities for sort of, uh, mass combat don't always emerge, other than maybe at the front, you know? But that also kind of makes sense. The dragon don't have like a huge standing army. They're one of the smallest, least populous clans. There is like a single smithing in there. Um, that I think is a issue. That's your only opportunity to do something uh, in school that can proc off your dazzling performance. So you might want to take it. Who knows? I think that's everything there is to talk about skills as you kind of wiggle your way down that tree. You do have an open-ended scholar skills, like I noted, so you can turn that into something else, either a theology or a medicine. You got a decent chunk of command, and like I said, you got lots of martial arts melee, and you got lots of meditation. Something you don't have unless you choose to take it at your three martial skill ranks, which again, you know, you're kind of splitting your difference here, is you don't have a lot of opportunities for ranged combat or unarmed combat. You will probably be fighting people with swords a lot, and if you are choosing to take ranged or unarmed, you are directly hurting your ability to take more meditation or take more uh, melee in curriculum, depending on how fast you want to rush down to that end. And actually, why don't we talk about the master ability really quick, just to, you know, keep it in there. But uh, they have Heart of the Dragon as a master ability once per round performing an attack check. You may spend opportunity as follows. You spend a single opportunity to perform a strike action with a readied weapon you have not used for an attack action this turn. Um... There's no, like, skill or ring specification on this, so I'm pretty sure if you roll enough opportunity, you can strike with Katana, strike with Wakazashi, kick, and then kick again. Because both your feet are free. Like, if you just want to barrage somebody to the ground. Most of the time, though, you'll be using it just to basically double attack very cheaply. If you can't, at rank 6, if you can't make a single opportunity to spend, you're in a bad way. If you're having a bad time, nobody should expect that. So, let's talk about your your uh, technique choices. So, at rank 1, you get privileged access to Iejutsu Cut Rising Blade. Now, as I've already said, especially with Trap, you could probably pull off the water-drawn cut technique if you want to look really cool and make sure that nobody can bitch about you not being on 4. But also, you can just take Rising Blade, uh, which works pretty good for you. As a privilege technique, I would recommend picking this up then you're like, ah, oh, definitely. Plus, hey, it lets you ready a weapon. It lets you ready two weapons if you've got the opportunity to spend. It's just a decent technique to take as kind of like a I'm going to get out there and, and slashy people kind of thing. You also can access uh, one of your handful of shuji choices because um, most of your most broad shuji choices are all back, are kind of like backloaded on this. So you can take uh, Stirring the Embers, which is a Fire, Shuji. And what Stirring the Embers does, rank one obviously, is when making a social skill uh, fire check targeting character, you can choose one of their known distinctions until the end of the scene. When that advantage applies to a check, they can reroll up to three dice instead of two. So that's a pretty good buddy ability. With your extensive amount of command, um, and you've got a decent fire uh, you can be the inspiring guy to be like, you, Samurai-san, you have the ability to fight this fight. You're really good at this. Go get him, Tiger. Right? Like, you can definitely be a supportive character with this setup and help people out and be like, you are the you go be the best that you can be. And we'll talk about technique recommendations later. Like I said, keep ignoring that left side. Don't you look over there. I'll know if you look. So let's move to rank two. 
Uh, rank two gets privilege access to heart piercing strike. One of I think a couple schools that do. The other one is the Matsu. Uh, once again, this is perfect because it just gives you a lot of flexibility. Fire is on point for you, uh, and you can drop those crits you want to crit for duels one way or another. So it's a really potent technique. Plus, dang, you're fighting, and it really befits, like I said, the more pragmatic style of, of a school based on the actual Miyamoto Musashi. Now, if you want to see me talk about uh, heart piercing strike in detail, go back to the Kakita one because I recommended that you take that. Or actually, it's uh, I think it's rank three for them. It's not privileged, but they get it later. But uh, here's the thing I noted earlier, as I may have mentioned, with the fact that you can get take striking as a water. Um, also at rank two, you can take slippery maneuvers, which is a water shuji at rank two. So this is a, uh, a very interesting. Selection as I realize my mic arm is slightly too low and I bump it as I try to lean in. Lean in conspiratorially. Slipper Maneuvers Rank 2 is a movement and support action you can take. And it's a command check, which, hey, you've got a fucking lot of that in your curriculum. It's a TN2 command check. And basically, uh, during a skirmish or mass battle, you can make uh, targets... Any number of friendly characters is your targets. Move towards a piece of terrain. And then anything that targets your targets, if people try to attack the people you picked for your ability, uh, they treat the terrain as obscuring until the end of the scene. And in a mass battle, it uh, uh, lets you uh, immediately occupy the terrain with your cohort. And it's obscuring. Uh, and then you can spend water opportunity to uh, have the obscuring be even better. Uh, yeah, this is really good for you. You will probably have an okay water. And just, once again, this befits the practical nature of your school. Uh, you will s take your buddies, possibly inspired by stirring the embers, you will scooch into a piece of terrain and you will make it obscuring. You will take advantage of the terrain to make it harder to hit you. And it lasts the whole scene. The only reason why you would lose this benefit is if something else happens in the narration where you gotta leave the position, which is entirely possible. Or maybe somebody else comes along and fucks it up. So, rank three is an interesting one because one, you can get the commune with the spirits ritual. Um, that's very interesting. And I think it's a good choice, especially if you're playing a more philosophical uh, and less pragmatic. Like, if you're if you're leaning heavily into the embodying the philosophy aspects of this school, it's a perfect pick. But even though every school can, well, almost every school can take rituals, it's very interesting to see rituals in curricula for a bushi school. Very interesting. Very flavorful. Doesn't do a lot for your build otherwise. What does do a lot for your build is Pillar of Calm, which is an Earth Shuji you get at privileged access. Normally, Pillar of Calm is rank, I want to say, four? Yeah, four. Uh, and we talked about this I th uh, with Kikita because it makes good sense for you, too. Uh, you try and make a command Earth check. Hey, like I said, gosh darn, you got a lot of command. Target number of characters up to your Earth Ring, and you de escalate the conflict one level. So you de escalate a mass battle to a skirmish, a skirmish to a duel, or a duel to an intrigue. Uh, this is perfect for you. Because, one, your ability doesn't work in mass, com mass combats. And as I said, while you're rolling in command, you're not exactly rolling in tactics. Uh, you got like one opportunity to pick like government. So. Thinking about, like, formal logistical mass battles, your character may not be prepared for that. You may run into fights where you're, you are not suited to that big battle. Heck, even just narratively, you if you're playing a dragon samurai, you might not have access to a lot of dudes to make a mass battle go your way. You can turn it into, like, a small skirmish between command teams. You can turn it into a duel, either outright or if you get enough opportunity. Uh, which is really good for you. God, you you almost always want to de-escalate a skirmish into a duel just for the sake of yourself. Like, as a player, don't do that all the time because that's kind of dickish that you're like, I'm going to de-escalate to a duel between me and you all the time. I'm the only one who fights. But dramatically, it can be very helpful. And then, of course, if you're like, gosh, I really don't want to fight a duel with this guy. Intrigue. Uh, Pillar of Calm is a great Shuji, and it works really well for your character. So rank four... Uh, once again, the kata are back. You can uh, take Crashing Wave style, which is, once again, 
water. And uh, this lets you suffer the, uh, inflict the bleeding condition. As kind of like a, you know, you you can get a little scratch damage in there, which is uh, pretty useful for you. I mean, it's it's a late game ability. You don't get privileged access, but it works out for your build type. Also, you can get striking as void, uh, which can be pretty fun. So striking as void, you get a privilege access to striking as void. Basically, um, this lets you either add extra actions or immediately switch to a different stance with opportunity spends. So you can be in void and you can make an attack with a void check and you can immediately be like, noop earth or noop water. Noop fire. Uh, heck, if you're not going to roll with it, you can just go uh, noop air for the extra TN. And also, like I said, if you fail, you can perform another action. Uh, so you whiff an attack, you can retreat. You can fall back. You can make the other guy spend his actions. It can be very handy. Uh, and then, like I said, crashing wave. On point for you, you've got a decent water. You can use it to kind of Again, um, as much as both historically and even in Rokugan, the actual setting, we like to take the philosophical elements of the actual Musashi who heavily inspired the Miramoto style and like be a, ooh, honor, ooh, really good fighting. Um, Miyamoto Musashi won over 60 duels uh, to the death and... Lots of them were, if they actually happened, lots of them were fought in practical settings, not in like, ooh, we're going to have deep ceremonial fights. Lots of them were, we're going to meet in the middle of the woods or we meet on the road and we're going to fight. So the, the fact that you can do something possibly slightly underhanded, you know, give them a little extra fatigue, give them a little bleed with a, with a water check, that's a very practical, pragmatic element, which is one of the things I like about this school because it interposes deeply philosophical Oodles of composition, you know, a decent chunk of theology options, loads of meditation, uh, striking his void is in there, coming with the spirits is there, and then you've got dirty tricks like heart-piercing strike or, you know, crashing wave. It's a really interesting build. And then, at rank 5, you get access to two Shujis. Very interesting. Uh, so you can either take... Uh, Sear the wound or rouse the soul. So, uh, sear the wound is a rank five uh, fire shuji, which when you're any, whenever you make any social skill fire check, if you uh, know a target's disadvantage, you can spend one fire opportunity to apply the disadvantage to all their checks until the end of the scene. Uh, that's a scary ability. Which is at rank five, so it's late game. But yes, you can, you can turn it up. You can activate an opponent's weakness and basically just cripple them for a scene. We're gonna pick on whatever your disadvantage is, and we're gonna make it keep applying uh, all the time. And that's that's a really, like I said, that's a really mean way to play this character to be like. I'm going to take advantage of your weakness in this moment. And then Rouse the Soul is a rank 5 Void Shuji. Whenever you make a social skill or theology void check targeting one or more characters, you can spend Void Opportunity to remove conditions from them. You can remove Afflicted, Enraged, Exhausted, Intoxicated, or Unconscious. This is interesting because it kind of rolls back to your very first Shuji choice, you know, Stirring the Embers, where you can be all meditative and calm and be like, no, you're better than you are. Samurai-san, you're not tired right now. You're fine. And you'll be like, oh, I guess I am not tired. Or, you know, sober up, man. Uh, it has to be void, so you kind of got to like put like a philosophical bent on it in your narration, but still. Uh, also, the ability to, to pick off Afflicted, once again, very late game, but useful. Very useful. Unconscious is also interesting. You can just be like, wake up. Um, very, very useful and interesting ability. Although, like I said, it... it they're kind of like the two parallels. One of them is deeply spiritual and like, no, you're better than you think you are. And the other one is, uh, no, you're actually worse than you think you are. You, in fact, suck, and I'm going to beat you up. Not that Amiramoto would probably phrase it like that, but it's an interesting juxtaposition, isn't it? So now you can stop ignoring the left hand of the screen, even though I know you, you didn't listen to me and you looked at it. I'm going to pretend you didn't. Polite fiction. Let's talk about some technique recommendations and kind of like walk through my thought process on them. 
So, in your first slot, you have a rank one kata of any choice. And uh, to me, this one's pretty simple. I mean, so there's a case to be made for you can only pick one striking as in your beginning. So, you know, go for it if you want another one. Uh, but to me, there's two key choices here. And they really depend on what you want to do. So obviously, uh, Warrior's Resolve is great. Just, you know, remove fatigue equal to your honor rank once per scene, spending a void point. You start at 50. So, you know, that's five probable fatigue you can remove. That's pretty baller. And as I said, as always, even if it's an out-of-curriculum purchase, Courtier's Resolve is a great, great shuji, which you should consider buying if you can. But the other thing is Soaring Slice. So, let me explain this. Let me explain why I, I say Soaring Slice. So, here's the thing. As I noted, you don't necessarily get a lot of opportunities to buy martial arts ranged in curriculum. And when you do so, they are directly taking away from your ability to buy more melee or more meditation. Now, obviously, you can still buy out of curriculum, but why do that when you can buy in curriculum and you can just get better at throwing swords? Hear me out. So, you, like I said, you don't have a lot of ranged synergy. You don't have a lot of ranged options. Uh, you don't start with any kind of ranged weapon. And re really, it doesn't logistically make sense for your character to, to double down. Like like I said, maybe out of as an out-of-curriculum purchase, you're like, well, I just don't happen to have a bow. Maybe I'll pick, pick up like a dot of ranged to get a skilled eye in there or whatever. Um, but you can just make a TN2 martial arts check with whatever's appropriate to the weapon. Oh, hey, you're really good at melee. To throw weapons at range 2 to 3, and then you can also reduce the TN of your next attack detection by the target by 1 for 1 opportunity, or spend multiple opportunity to increase the range. That's so on point for you. Uh, that's such a thing to do, because you typically have multiple weapons. You definitely either have a Daisho, or you have a couple of spare weapons, because you can have a Wakazashi and two Rarity 6 weapons. You can pick up other stuff, and because your school ability still works with an empty hand, it's not like a huge loss if a guy is at range. He's kind of being a pain in the butt. You throw you throw your spare sword at him. You still got a free hand if you need to use Heart of the... Uh, not Heart of the Dragon, Way of the Dragon. Sorry. And you still have your katana. And you can get, with opportunity spends, fairly decent range out of this. It's a great investment just to be able to go all in throwing at people. Hucking and a chucking. Because like I said, you you should have spare weapons as a, as a Miramoto. You should have, you know, either your paired weapons. Dragon are not necessarily a super rich clan, but you should you should be able to swing a knife or two, you know, in there somewhere. It's not a huge deal. Throw knives at people. Throw sticks at people. I don't know. I know what you do. But like I said, I, I find it as very thematic because it's very much a, hey, you didn't expect me to come at you throwing one of my weapons at you. And it gives you the ability to attack opponents who are being kind of cheeky at range from you at least once to, like, close in. You know, give yourself some opportunity. Never be caught surprised. Then at rank 2, you can pick a rank 1 to 2 kata. So obviously, I'm going to say this now because we're going to start talking about lots of rank 1 to X blocks. You can always consider going back a rank. And in fact, in some rank recommendations, like um, for rank 1 to 5, because you don't have a rank 1 to 4 kata, I will recommend actually going back and maybe picking up one of the 4s. But in general, for our future, preface this now, also if you feel like it, you can go back and take one of the rank the earlier ranks that you feel like you missed. But at the rank 1 to 2 kata, I think there's only real two key choices for you here. Number one is the incredibly obvious option of, well, now you can take Crossing Cut. Uh, crossing Cut's really good. It's got a pretty uh, basic TN, right, for what it does. It's only two normally, whereas uh, Rising Blade is, is uh, Vigilance. Corrected in the errata. Uh, Crossing Blade lets you have a broader range. You can do range 1 to 2. We talked about that, you know, like some of your range disadvantages. And it also does a, uh, a little bit more damage. As opposed to uh, a, a Rising Blade, it's like, well, it's a free creative thing. They're compromised. 
I don't recommend Coiling Serpent because you're not necessarily going to be using a lot of snaring. I guess if you went for, like, the Butterfly Swords angle, you could throw Coiling Serpent in there. But that's, like, a, once again, that's a very specific build. This is very general to what makes sense for your school. And what makes sense for a Miramoto other than Spinning Blade style. Uh, so, basically, spend opportunity equal to your target's vigilance and use a second readied weapon on the target of your action, inflicting physical damage. And then if they're dazed, you can increase the ranks in the skill you used for the uh, damage by ranks in the skill used for this check. So, I'm actually a little bit surprised Spinning Blades isn't physically in the curriculum. I guess Heart of the Dragon does a similar ability at rank 6 still. And I guess technically, since it's a rank 2 kata, it, it is in curriculum. It's just, like I said, I'm I'm kind of shocked it's not for sure in there. But yeah, this is one of the best ways to get the advantage out of wielding multiple weapons. And it totally works for you. This is totally an on-point idea to be this whirling dervish of blades to throw in an extra attack or even, like, a, a kick or a knee in there or a punch, you know? So it's it's a great technique for your school if you're really playing up your dual-wielding angle, okay? Uh, and it, like I said, it's... If you're... Find yourself using your school ability a lot, it might not work because you can't necessarily use your offhand weapon but hey i mean you've got a decent chance to get initiative scores and it's entirely possible you'll be going first so you can at the very least start out this way before you start using your school ability and it can be very handy so at rank three you get another rank one to three kata this is i think one of your most diverse choices most of them i'm like pick this or maybe pick this if you want to go that angle this has a lot of different options depending on what you want to do and depending on what works for your character. So, starting at the top, you can take Battle in the Mind. I recommend this only if you're uh, really into dueling or maybe other certain conflicts, but mostly dueling because... Okay, so your Void's probably not awful, but the two rings, your opponent picks another ring, they can't do their stance. That's a little... That's the weaker of the two options, I think. you, If you're being a smart player, you can make that work for you but it's not the best use. The best use is for uh, is to learn their techniques and just dump all your opportunity into this. And this is very key for duels, I think, because it lets you feel out your opponent's strategy. Uh, you can find out, if you don't already know, if they have Iaijutsu Cut, if they have Heart Piercing Strike, you know, if they have other stuff. If you are in a social situation, you can use it to feel out, hey, do you know some specific Shuji that are going to give me trouble? Mostly it's going to be like, what kata do you know that I need to know about? And so that can be very handy, I think, for you. But it's a little narrow. It's a little specific. I think some of your other options are more make more sense. So uh, Crimson Leaf Strike, rank 3 technique, is your disarm. You can make a martial arts earth. Hey, you're pretty good at earth, probably. So your target suffers physical damage equal to your earth ring, and then bonus successes. So it's, a, it's, a, it's not as good as a sword, probably. I accept it very high ranks or high rings, but it's it's a little bit of damage. And then they lose control of a chosen weapon, which you can either steal, which, hey, you love extra weapons. Sorry, Strike. Um, so that's real fun. Or you can just throw it three range bands away. That's really handy for your pragmatic, practical, I really don't want you to have that weapon anymore. I'm going to, you know, scatter it away like the leaves. A very solid option. Flowing Water Strike is another one. This is a water... Uh, and you can basically use it to attack anybody at range 0 to 2, regardless of whatever weapon you're using. Once again, much like um, the crossing cut, this is a good way to give yourself extra reach because you're probably very melee-focused. Also means you can use your katana at range 0. That's pretty handy if somebody's up in your grill trying to assassinate you or something. Useful. And then you can give them the bleeding condition, a little bit of damage, and then you can actually do your base weapons damage, which is pretty good. Uh, and again, the, the bleeding is very thematic. It, you know, dovetails into the future Crashing Wave style. Also, you can become undazed, disoriented, and mobilized or prone, which is very useful for you, I think. The, the like flow like water. Super thematic, very on point, much like Crimson Leaves. Now, Thunderclap is, I think, the weakest option because it's air. Air is really a ring that you're not interacting with. But it can make sense for your character to attack... Uh, multiple people in your range 
and push them away from you. If you're getting mobbed, it can be a very distinct technique. I would not recommend it like I would recommend it for Kakita because that really, for them, that really works out to like keep people from trying to aggro them to death. It's in probably one of your weaker ring selections, and just in general, it's how thematic it is kind of depends. I would definitely pick uh, Flowing Water or Crimson Leaves over Thunderclap, but I don't know your life. And then rank four is interesting. This is the only chance you get to pick a free whatever you want Shuji and have it be in curriculum. Uh, like, this is your only rank one to X Shuji option. And it's for Earth. Uh, and I think it works because you've got a couple of different options here. All right, you got rank one to four. So what are you going to pick? I recommend a couple of different moves here. So Stonewall Tactics is a solid one. That's the one that when you make a a uh, a martial or uh, social skill, you can spend opportunity to increase the che- TN of any target the checks making the checks not on you until the beginning of your next turn. So basically, you can draw aggro. It works with martial arts. So if you're fighting somebody, you can be like, "Hey, fight me." It's all around really handy. The only issue is it's rank one. You could have easily picked this up as like an out of curriculum purchase earlier. Civility Foremost is another good one. You make a Commander Courtesy Earth. Hey, once again, both of those are pretty on point for you. Uh, against the target's Vigilance. If you succeed, the target must forfeit honor equal to your Earth Ring, plus your bonus successes, and suffer that much strife to target an, an individual. Uh, and you can spend opportunity to target multiple people this way. So that's another good, really good way to draw aggro and be like, hey, uh, you should not attack or like come at this person or you're going to lose face, and you're going to gain strife. Uh, very useful, I think, in some situations. Uh, and you'll know, uh, like, here's another one of those options that's kind of weird, like, Pillar of Calm was a privileged technique at rank 3 for you, so you probably should have picked it up at then, but if you didn't, you can double back, but the other thing you could take is Touchstone of Courage, which is a rank 3, and as a support action, make a command check. And if you succeed during an Intrigue duel sk- uh, or skirmish, yeah, each target com- increases their composure by your Earth Ring, uh, and it says any number of characters. So I'm pretty sure you can do this to yourself, and uh, you know that's pretty good. And then increase your army's discipline by your Earth Ring, and then you can remove strife, or or uh, and make enemies receive, uh, re- or make your own army re- remove panic. Uh, this is just a really good technique. Like I said, I'm pretty sure since it says duel, you can. You can do this to yourself, maybe? It says any character, any number of characters. I'm pretty sure that means you can do it to you, too. Um, you could also totally cheat and yell from the sidelines, Hey, buck up, buddy. You know, remember your training to, to make that work. Uh, that's really good. This is one of your few chances to get a decent mass battle technique in. And plus, it works in intrigues or, or skirmishes, which, like I said, kind of rounds out your character. You can totally be a very bro, supportive Miramoto fighter. Or you can do nasty tricks and just, I'm really courageous right now, myself. And just the ability to bump your composure is really good. And then rank 1 to 5. This is an interesting one. I think this is one of the more flexible ones. Because you can get striking as void up here uh, as, as a, a preliminary. Uh, the obvious kata you might take at this step is Soul Sunder. That's a very situational one. But your void's probably not awful. You probably have a decent meditation. So, you can use this to fight supernatural creatures, uh, otherworldly beings. If you're fighting that kind of campaign, or because your campaign's gone on so long enough, it's kind of become that way. That's cool. That's a good one. Uh, other than that, it's very situational. You are, If you are just doing a pure fighting build, you're much more likely to pick a couple of rank fours, which fit your rings. Uh, and personally, because once again, you can get Crashing Wave at your previous rank, uh, I recommend Disappearing World or Iron in the Mountains. Disappearing World is the fire check. You can spend opportunity uh, to make the target dazed and suffer fatigue if they fail a check. Pretty solid. Uh, you know, you can kind of coordinate that dazed stuff going on. And then Iron in the Mountains lets you knock a person prone and do damage. You know, just... More more dirty tricks that the Miramoto can use. Knock a guy prone, clonk a guy on the side of the head with a hilt something. Just it's a it's a solid option for you. So I think that's basically everything. 
Then we just talk about advancement. Let's wrap this up and move into some options, uh, like what your clan can do for you and what your family and stuff does. So after that very long discussion, let's have a very short one, which is just about clan. So obviously, the most likely you're going to be is Dragon Clan. So that actually synergizes pretty well. Your ring is fire. Your stat, your skill is meditation. Your status is only 30 because you're kind of a farther out clan. And you get four families to pick from. The one of those is weird, and we'll talk about that when we get to families in a second. But just your ring and skill adds totally, totally f- work well from your moto. And you can kind of like uh, crawl in there and get much more out of your abilities you know the fire matches up meditation matches up maybe that means that you don't need to take meditation right away if you're not going to focus exclusively on dueling you might also you know be branch out to be able to pick up a couple more of your starting skills or maybe you'll double up and be even better who knows but fundamentally the clan is a really good fit and also philosophically you know dragon clan is known for kind of their individualist bent they believe on on in sincerity of, of, of sense, you know, living your life in an honest way and living it uh, in, a, in a slightly individualist way. You know, everybody must study the, the Tao on their own and all that stuff and kind of kind of figure it all out. So w- with the way we've talked about how, first of all, your school is very flexible in general and you can kind of like pick your own path to mastery. And at times you might play by slightly different rules than most of Rokugan. Uh, actually being core Dragon Clan works out really well. Though, obviously, you could do lots of fun stuff with other clans, but that's like a completely different discussion. So let's go ahead and talk about those families. So as just stated just now, we've got four families to pick from, kind of. So we'll do this a little out of order. Obviously, the Miramoto family itself is a good pick. Uh, 44 Glory, 5 Koku. They give you... Uh, fitness and tactics as a skill, which, as I noted, like, unless you're kind of pulling from your opportunity to be even more laser-focused on melee or meditation, you don't know, uh, you don't have a lot of opportunity to take fitness, so this is a good way to double up early. Uh, they also give you tactics, which, as we said, you know, that's another one of those cases where it's like, eh. And, in general, fitness is probably pretty good for you if you're at home in the mountains trucking around there. Uh, you can pick either earth or water, so this means you can go for a great, you know, earth-focused build, or you can spread out uh, and get, you know, your build to go where it is. This means you could you could conceivably be, uh, let me do my math right, yeah, you start at one, so you can get fire one from your dragon clan, and then you get another fire from your school, and then you can get Earth from family, and then you can get Earth from school. So you could be through Fire Three Earth, a great a great build, or you can broaden that out to Water, uh, which gives you more flexibility in rings, gives you more options you can take, and also works for your character. So the Cormier Moto family is really good. And your other families, uh, the Agasha family is Fire or Void, and you can take Medicine, and you take Medicine and Smithing. You know, that can really spice you up in terms of those skills. That can give you an artisan skill that you can proc your dazzling performance on right away. Your money's a little bit lower, but you shouldn't care too much about that. Uh, you can start off with a higher void, which can be really good for your more philosophical bent. Same with the medicine, you know. Or you can take fire, and once again, you can just be all fire all the time. Because you uh, can allocate your excess rings over three to other places. Or, like I said, you can just be like, well, I'm going to get... Uh, three fire anyway, so I can just take a void and let my void go up. So this is a really good way if you want to play that kind of like warrior philosopher or warrior poet type build, kind of like I fight, but also I solve the mysteries of the universe in my spare time, which can be a very interesting build. And because Agasha is technically a Shugenja family, you know, but at the same time, you never have a whole lot of Shugenja born in any family, it can definitely work as like the, well, you know, I had, where else was I going to go? It's true, you could be a, a Kitsuki investigator, but who knows. Speaking of that, uh, Kitsuki family, they, I don't know if they fit as well. You can take air or water, so water works, just like it does for Miramoto. Uh, your skills are government and sentiment, which aren't really in your build, and then you do get more money, but that doesn't really help you, because you're supposed to be like an inherent to the, the, the Dao and all that stuff. So I do think that, that Kitsuki is a bit of a weird fit here. 
Um, certainly, you could choose to adopt the path. Like, that could totally make sense for your character, but you'd be a bit of an odd duck, so I don't know if it meshes as well. So now we got the Togashi Order, which is not printed as the Togashi family because they're weird. They're technically a monk order, but they all take the surname Togashi, and they're all supposed to be related through, like, the magic tattoos to, like, the Kami Togashi. And I'm going to be honest, as much as I'm sure they aren't about earthly aspects, I am also dead sure that there's plenty of premarital sex going on at a monastery where they're allowed to be individuals. It's like Jedi. Those guys were actually, you know, a commitment's bad. Marriage would be weird, but uh, just banging? Yeah, whatever. So I am certain there could be Tagashi-born children, people born and raised in the monastery who aren't suitable for the actual monkly order because that's like a whole thing you do, right? That's a whole challenge and, and path you can take. And so I think it's possible to weave this story, but it's still weird. So your GM should give you the side eye if you don't have a good explanation for why your name is Togashi, but you aren't a monk. Or hey, maybe your name isn't Togashi. Maybe you married out because you weren't necessarily very monkly. I don't know, stuff happens. There's a broad political spectrum. But looking at their choices, you can get Earth or Void. So uh, that's another one that's interesting, you know. You can take that Earth, you can get your Earth up there, or you can take that Void and be more spiritual. Uh, your glory is slightly higher. That could be fun. And your skills are fitness and theology again. So that can really work for your build, depending on what you're doing. It's a weird fit, but you can make it work. Uh, obviously, out of these, I think being an actual Miramoto in the Miramoto school works best, but... Like I said, Agash is actually a really good fit, too, which makes a lot of sense. The other two are kind of like, for one reason or another, they don't resonate as well, at least to me, you know, as, as, as a, a reader and perspective game master. But you could make them work as well. Um, I mean, if you want irony, you could be a crane uh, who trained in the two-sword school. That'd be pretty funny. It'd be an interesting, like, some kind of weird trade you did. Or a crab. That's another classic rivalry. Um... I'd have to, like, double-check what those would do to you as, as far as a character build. Uh, heck, I could call an audible. Let's see. So, crab is earth and fitness, so that would probably work pretty well. Uh, crane is air and culture, so that's not as much as tight of a fit. Uh, but, you know, a lot of, looking at it, a lot of your your crab possible families have decent decent ring and skill selection like maybe not maybe not yasuki that'd be that'd be like extra weird but i i could see a you know a cross train like hida or kayu or akuni who's not a shigenja could be pretty interesting uh haruma might like some of the pragmatic tricks like if you did like a weird trade so you you could make that work as like a funny thing and have it actually function if you want to do some fun stuff but then, yeah that's families and so, after over an hour of this, and yes, I know it's an hour because I've already calculated how long all the segments prior to this are, and they're still an hour, so even with editing, uh, we come to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this Enter the Dojo. Uh, looking at it overall, Miramoto is a really interesting school. It can be very powerful in a fight. Uh, they can be very powerful duelists. Like I said at the start, they're an interesting contrast to the Kakita in a lot of ways because the Kakita is very much that laser focus. Like, they are... And yeah, I don't I don't mean to cause harm with this remark, but they are what a lot of sectors of the internet would use the pop cultural version of autism to describe, right? They have a incredibly narrow, sometimes awkward focus on the perfect strike. You know, what uh what pop culturally like ten years ago was OCD. They really want to get you whatever form that perfect strike takes, you know, the strike with no thought. They want to get that to work, and that works out in very specific situations and does not work for them in other situations. The Miramoto are all about flexibility, whether it's flexibility in the fact that I have two weapons, that's flexibility in thought and deed, it's flexibility to go, I don't have to fight you in fire stance, I can fight you in water stance or earth stance, what are you going to do now? I can fight you in void stance, and then I can be in a completely different stance the next turn, right? Uh, or it's their interesting juxtaposition of this like spiritual, philosophical... I have studied the philo philosophy of the elements and how they relate to combat, but I'm not afraid to kick you in the dick if I have to in a in a straight up fight, right? They have a lot of tricks which you could perceive as dirty, you know, a lot of opportunities to take dirty tricks or just they're right in their curriculum, and they can be at home in a lot of different situations. Like I said, though, their focus, you know, 
is much less on the artistic. They don't have a lot of opportunities for artistic skill pickups. They have a very narrow social focus. I don't know if they net like the. It's a good thing that the the Kitsuki exist and can they get their free ranks in government because considering that the Miramoto are supposed to be the administrators of a lot of dragon territory, they don't get a lot of skills in that leaning. They get like one free slot on scholar skills, and that's like your only time in school you can take government. So. Yeah, you are you are very much a fighter. You can fight in all kinds of situations, and you can even have a couple of you got a couple of supportive shuji options where you can be like that philosophical bro and be like, "Nah, you're still cool." Uh, you don't have a lot of punch up though in a in a in an intrigue. So, it's a very interesting contrast. Uh, they make great well rounded characters. The two swords are always cool, uh, and I like Musashi for reasons of my own which i don't think i can fit in this video end slide but hey just search on our channel for me one of massage you'll see some stuff you'll see some shit i think it's a really good school some people have said that it's one of the best schools i could see that their core ability is really good and, and as i noted is applicable in a lot of situations it really helps them but i think some of their social angle is a bit lacking which they don't mind because like i said there's that spiritual focus like yeah whatever sticks and stones it's it's a very interesting school, and I like it a lot, and I would love to run it sometime, but uh, hey, I fucking love dragons, so that's fine. So, we're in the outro segment. Um, I got a decent amount of views. I didn't get a lot of feedback on the last episode, so uh, you know, try and give me your thoughts on, like, do you like the structure? Do you like the length? Is there anything you want me to talk more about, talk less about? You know, should I refine the script up a little? Because a lot of this is my general way of quote-unquote scripting videos is I write the notes. You guys generally see kind of what I write, though obviously you can't see that I also double-check. I actually look at the book to check my sources a lot. I double-check myself and doubt myself a lot. I actually caught an error, which you won't see because I haven't even... Uh, I made the assets but did not set them up in video form, where when I spoke this earlier, I accidentally left it so that the choose one kata was still listed as shuji, but I fixed that, and I didn't say anything about it until now, so you kind of know. Like, So that's my general like talking structure about these. If you want me to put in more margin notes, I totally can to like actually have more specific talking points if you feel like that, or if you're just okay with my kind of like off the crop, off the cruff, off the cuff, half improv style. And of course, a big question of feedback. Now that I've done kind of like two of the most philosophically opposed schools, I think out there, uh, or at least classical rivalries, uh, what schools do you want me to cover next? There's so many that I would love to talk about, like, um, you know, Heated Defender could be another good third point in this in this talk. Uh, a lot of people are are kind of, like, curious about some of the different Scorpion schools and the way they click together. I've talked at length about how much I love Kitsuki Investigators, so that's really cool. Uh, lots of Shugenja schools are just fun, you know? Uh, Kaito's another popular kind of, like, what is going on here thing that people like to talk about. As I mentioned before, I really like the Dragon Clan. I could talk about any of those. Just let me know in your feedback. Let me know what schools you'd like me to give this analysis to, any direction. Uh, and don't mention Emerald Empire stuff yet, because I need them to release a PDF first, and then I'll be sure to talk about that later, because I also have thoughts and feelings on some of those. Uh, from what I've seen of it... Excuse me. Uh, what I've seen of it, um, Kitsune Impersonator is really interesting. There's another school that's really interesting in there that I don't know if people want me to name off the top, just in case. Who knows? Uh, some people have thoughts and feelings about the, how interesting the schools, the other schools are. Like, are the, the Imperial schools really good and stuff? Well, we can talk about that way later. I feel like we should probably work through a lot of the core book schools before we get to the extra schools that are going to be added in supplements. Uh, but yeah, I will try and do these slightly more frequently, like maybe one or two a month. And obviously we'll do other L5R videos. And, uh, yeah, just let me know your thoughts and your feedback and your feelings. If you like this video, give it a like. That really helps it stand out on the channel, you know, get circulation, and let's just know you enjoy it. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Not just the feedback I ask for, but any other kind of feedback you got. You can also join our Discord. Sometimes I rant about L5R in it. And, of course, if you are new here and have not already, please do subscribe to the channel because we are going to be regularly posting L5R videos. How regularly? Don't know yet, but regularly. And at some point, swear to God, I'm going to actually run this game on mic for people, and then you can have actual play recordings. And even if you are subscribed, also to get that bell for notifications, so you always know to uh, when we post a video, and if it's a video you want to see. 
And like it says at the front, consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, because these episodes are so long, I actually take the audio version, which is just me talking. There's no visual aids. But, you know, uh, if you want to just listen to it as kind of like a thought discussion, if you support us at the $1 level, you can get access to that and get access to previous stuff and just listen if that's your speed. Or you can watch with visuals and stuff to double check what the F I'm actually talking about. And yeah, that's the show. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Everybody, stay cool, stay honorable, fellow samurai sons. And uh, if you see that guy holding two swords, watch out, okay? All right, bye, everybody. Thanks for your time.